Thank you. Um, I just wanted to address this issue of free speech and fundamentalism. And again, in this instance, I think we mean all fundamentalisms, Islamic fundamentalism, Hindu fundamentalism, Buddhist fundamentalism, uh, which we see on the rise in Sri Lanka and Myanmar, and of course, Christian fundamentalism. And I think when you look at the issue of fundamentalism and freedom of speech, I think the very act of a woman speaking is in reality an act of blasphemy. It is an act of apostasy. And I think that the reality is that under religious rules, and in my context I'm talking about Islamic rules, but I think it applies across the board, depending on how much power they have. They're a lot nicer and a lot more cuddly when they don't have power. Then they're handing out soup and helping the homeless. But of course, you still have to come to church and listen to their nonsense. Um, they, you know, so depending on the level of power they have, uh, it is truly a crime to be a woman. You know? And if you look at Sharia law, not just in Iran or Afghanistan or Saudi Arabia, but also in Sharia courts here in Britain, Pragna and I have been working on the One Law for All campaign for many years now, as has South Hall Black Sisters. You know, the, the, a, anything that is to the benefit of women, they are against. And anything that hurts women is their logo and their dogma and their text. Uh, I mean, you can, you can it, it, it is exactly that way. So under Islamic rules, for example, um, a woman's right to divorce is limited. A woman uh, can't have child custody at, after a preset age. But stoning a woman is all right. The only problem is the size of the stone. Uh, it's okay to have child marriages. It's okay to have several wives. Uh, domestic violence is the prerogative of the husband. You know, it's, it's a topsy-turvy world. And that's why secularism is not just a philosophical idea, but it is a matter of life and death for many women, particularly those who live under the boot of the religious right. They, you know, when we speak, it's often considered a provocation. You're provoking them, that's why they want to kill you. You're provoking them, that's why, you know, they, uh, they have to silence you and cover you up and erase you from the public space. I'm sorry, but they're provoking us. They're provoking me. And our, our speaking up with the only tools we have, you know, our, our hands and our voices and our bodies, that is the only way we are able to challenge them and challenge them we will. I wanted to just use uh, a few minutes to show you a couple of things that we've done at the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain and One Law for All. You know how in Iran they have the Commission for the Promotion of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice at one of the uh, gay prides that we were at. We were actually the imams of sin and anything that's haram and, uh, you know, uh, sinful. And we were actually there to promote vice and prevent virtue. Um, so using comedy and, um, you know, uh, mockery in order to challenge these rules. This is Muhammad himself, the prophet, who is here at Gay Pride. If Jesus can be there, Muhammad can certainly be at Gay Pride as well. Next. Allah is a woman. You know, I don't believe in Allah, of course. Uh, but this is, again, uh, not saying that Allah is nice. He definitely isn't. Uh, but it's saying that acts of blasphemy is what we as women do. So Allah is a woman. Actually, we, we, I held this sign at a protest in Germany in defense of two women lesbians on death row in Iran. And um, young Muslim men passing by and some women started shouting, Allahu Akbar. And I said, I'm sorry that you are more offended by this sign than the fact that two lesbian women are facing execution in Iran. The woman's Quran, now we have created the woman's Quran and you ask what's in it, well it's actually blank because there's nothing good in the Quran for women. And this is, uh, and since the woman's Quran is blank, we've been making our own uh, verses in the Quran. Now this one, 
Uh, it's, it's not in, for, uh, in English, but you know the surah and the Quran which says that women are your tilth, go and tilth and, and use them in any way we want, you want. Uh, this surah says, uh, why don't you go and um, tilt some donkey feed for yourself so that you have something to feed yourself with. Uh, the next one is again saying, oh, you believing men, if you can't see women's hair, well, we found a solution for you. Uh, this is at a recent protest in uh, London, uh, burning... Uh, the veil and also burning the bra, so maybe feminists can see the link there. Uh, and of course, topless protests. I'm not sure, I, th I think there are feminists who don't agree with uh, nude protest and topless protest, but I think given the fact that you're dealing with a religious right movement that wants to erase you in every way, fabric, you know, with fabric on your body, your voice is banned. In that sense, I think, uh, when a woman's body has been used as a tool of suppression, not just of women, but of society at large, then woman's bodies in her own hand as political protest is an important tool for liberation. Uh, the first one was in front of a major mosque in Köln, uh, which was going to say the azan or the call to prayer for the first time. Yes, you have a right to your religion, but don't bring it in my public space. Because that azan reminds me of all the women raped and tortured and executed, because that's what they used in Iran to do that. And this is at the Louvre in 2014. Our bodies are our weapons against the religious right. This is uh, uh, drinking and eating during Ramadan. Uh, I have, uh, you know, the prayer beads. And also the Iranian regime's flag has Allah in the center, which has been cut out. And actually in the previous photo, I had put something much more useful and valid in its place. Next, this is uh, work we do on women leaving Islam. Ex-Muslim because some people don't believe in flying horses, get over it. Ex-Muslim because no 72 virgins for me. <laughs> And again, this is all about, you know, the fundamentalists don't represent us. They don't speak for us. We will not be silenced. We will not live our lives according to their choices. We will provoke, we will mock, and we will defend women life freedom.